hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this video is highly requested and today i'm gonna walk you through your world questions about acid base disorders including the acid base curves the up and down arrows and even aspirin toxicity and we'll show you a simple way to approach these questions so let's get started all right so the first question is about a curve the acid base curves and i know how this can be frustrating but i'm going to show you a very simple way to approach that so the question says a 23 year old man pretty young so you're gonna start thinking about DKA and these stuff that appear early. A 23 year old man comes to a physician because of recent onset of polyuria and polydipsia. He has also lost some weight over the last two weeks and his urine has developed a fruity smell. By now, I guess you guys have already figured out this is a case of ketoacidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis. And if you remember that the mnemonic mud piles that DKA is actually one of the causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis or metabolic acidosis, just remember it like that. Which means that on the curve, I'm going to show you a very simple way to approach this curve. I want you to first draw a vertical line. So this is the pH, guys, and this is the bicarbonate concentration. And along this curve, as you go up, more CO2, as you go down, less CO2, okay? So we have three parameters here, or three values. It's as if we're representing the arterial blood gas values on a curve, okay? So what I want you to do first is to draw a vertical line at 7.4. Sorry, okay, so it should be here. So, a vertical line at pH 7.4 separates whatever before that is acidosis, whatever after that is alkalosis, right? So, where are we on this curve? You should be before that. You should be on this side, right? Okay, so I'm going to ignore answer choice D. We've already at least uh, excluded something, right? So you have a lot to choose here, B or E. Of course, you're not going to choose C because this is normal. This is exa at exactly 7.4 and we are acidotic. So what I want you to do again is to draw a horizontal line. So now we drew a vertical line to decide that we are in the range of acidosis, right? Okay. Now, whenever we want to figure out whether it's respiratory or metabolic, obviously this is metabolic because um, in diabetes, not enough glucose is going into the cells, so the cells are finding another um, source of energy by forming ketone bodies, and that's why he actually lost some weight. And these ketone bodies are what's causing the acidosis, so these are extra anions, and I talk about that in more detail in my DKA video. So... That means that it's metabolic. So we have extra metabolites or extra anions that are making, that are consuming the bicarbonate buffer system. And so you expect the bicarbonate to be low. And so I'm going to start drawing a horizontal line at 24, which is the normal bicarbonate concentration. And we should be below this line because the anions that have been created, the ketone bodies, are consuming the bicarbonate buffer system and taking as much of it as they can so that the bicarbonate is below 24. So by this, we've excluded answer choices A and B. And so we're only left with answer choice E. You see, guys? So draw a vertical line, okay? Whatever before that curve is acidosis. Whatever after that curve is alkalosis. So now we decided we're in acidosis. Then draw a horizontal line. Is the bicarbonate consumed? Of course it is. Just like the case is with any metabolic acidosis, right? And so you're going to go below the bicarbonate curve. Now, what if we have another answer choice here, for instance? Let's say it's also below the bicarbonate curve, so we're in the range of metabolic acidosis as well, but the difference is CO2, 
right? Now we already know, guys, that the answer choice is E. But what if there is an there is a distractor here, for instance? Okay. Now, do you consider that? Do, do you think that the lungs will stay like that and find that there is acidosis in the blood and that the bicarbonate is consumed and the lungs are just gonna sit like that? I want you guys to know that the lungs are very fast at correcting uh, metabolic acid-based disturbances. The lung is essentially the first system to work. So right away, this person would be breathing uh, quickly. It's called Kussmaul's breathing. They will have tachypnea to wash out CO2 as much as they can to get rid of acid. So we know that CO2 is a source of acid in the body. So if we get rid of it, then uh, we are at least calming down the acidosis a bit. And that's what the lungs are trying to do, which means that you should expect that a normal person would compensate, would have respiratory compensation by washing out the CO2, right? And so you would expect us to be on the top of this curve or on the bottom of this curve. The CO2 can never be normal. 40 is normal. It has to be low. It has to compensate, right? And so at 20, okay, this is reasonable. And in a way, in an attempt to compensate for the metabolic acidosis, okay? So in metabolic acid-based disturbances, the lungs are always fast to act and you will never find a normal carbon dioxide concentration unless it's a mixed acid-based disturbance. So guys, again, draw a vertical line to, um, to know where you are, acidosis or alkalosis, and then draw a horizontal line so as to... Um, to figure out the bicarbonate concentration. Above this curve, the bicarbonate is high. Below that curve, the bicarbonate is low, which is true and expected for metabolic acid-based disturbances. And then after that, you're gonna choose between the three curves of PaCO2, assuming there are answer choices here. And you're gonna choose the low CO2 because there is washout and respiratory compensation. And by the way, guys, the kidneys will also compensate for respiratory acid-based disturbances. Suppose, for example, we have, let's delete all that. Suppose we have respiratory acidosis, which is manifested by this, and choice A. You have a lot of CO2 building up, and that's making the, uh, or curve B, and that's making the pH go down, right? So this is respiratory acidosis. The kidneys will also try to compensate, but it will take time. It will take like three days. And so in an acute setting, you might expect that the bicarbonate level will be normal because there is not enough chance for the kidneys to compensate. But for the lungs, the CO2 will always change to compensate because the lungs are fast, but the kidneys are slow. Now, I can go on and on about the acid-base curves, guys. Uh, so here, this vertical line, before that line, on the left of that line, there is acidosis. On the right of that line, there is alkalosis, okay? Now, sometimes they will test you by bringing a case of chronic or acute respiratory acidosis or alkalosis to see whether you understand that the kidneys are slow but the lungs are fast. If the lungs are fast, that means any metabolic case, whether acidosis or alkalosis, will see a change in carbon dioxide to compensate. So, for example, here in metabolic acidosis, we are on the lower parts of the CO2 line because the lungs are always fast to wash out CO2. When we are here in metabolic alkalosis, we are on the higher parts of the curve, 50 and 60, because the lungs will accumulate CO2 to compensate for the alkalosis. Okay, so it doesn't matter acute or chronic here. It's metabolic. As long as it's metabolic, then there is respiratory compensation and there's always an abnormal level of carbon dioxide to compensate. But when it comes to respiratory problems, here's when it's different because the kidneys are slow. If you are in the acute setting, you will find that the bicarbonate level is normal because the kidneys haven't got a chance 
to compensate right and so in uh, this uh, in this time you will find that the bicarbonate is normal you're still in the acidotic range here and you have accumulated a lot of co2 leading to respiratory acidosis but in the chronic setting as in copd patients for example you will find that there is metabolic compensation by the kidney and so the bicarbonate level will try to increase to compensate for that and so goes for the alkalosis um, this curve will take time guys so i'm gonna um, shift to the next question all right so a 34 year old woman is brought to the emergency department by the ambulance due to nausea vomiting and dizziness her boyfriend arrives with her and says that he found her lying on the bed next to an empty bottle of aspirin tablets so now the question has already given away what this toxicity is when asked about the potential ingestion the patient complains of an annoying buzzing sound that won't stop this is guys this is the early sign of uh, or early symptom of aspirin intoxication or poisoning which is uh, tinnitus alongside the gi symptoms nausea vomiting all right and admits to swallowing a bunch of aspirin pills four to five hours ago now i need you to note this time because this is a little bit late it's not late but it's after two hours okay four to five hours on physical exam her temperature is 30 she's um we know guys that aspirin leads to hyperthermia because it, it uncouples oxidative phosphorylation so that instead of the cells making atp they release it as heat her pulse is 102 obviously the pulse will go up um well 10 degree 10 beats per minute for every one degree um, the patient appears agitated and confused, which of the following sets of laboratory results most likely be found in this patient. So, guys, an aspirin pill causes mixed acid-base disorders. An aspirin pill, early on, at like two hours later, for example, one to two hours after ingestion, it stimulates the respiratory center, leading to hyperventilation. Hyperventilation will wash out CO2 and lead to respiratory alkalosis. Later, which is what this patient is presenting uh, with at like four to five hours later after ingestion, aspirin starts performing its metabolic effect by inhibiting oxidative phosphorylation and inhibiting the Krebs cycle and, and inhibiting like so many stuff leading to accumulation of organic acids or lactic acid and that leads to metabolic acidosis right so what do you expect in this patient you expect that because of the respiratory alkalosis her carbon dioxide level would be low and at the same time because of the metabolic acidosis and all these accumulated anions on organic acids her bicarbonate level will be low so again i brought this from first aid guides that respiratory alkalosis one of its causes is early salicylate toxicity and part of the mud piles mnemonic is late salicylate toxicity so this is the only time guys that i will tell you don't look at the ph because this mix of acidosis alkalosis is likely to normalize the ph when indeed something is wrong and so what i want you to look at is the values of co2 and bicarbonate we expect carbon dioxide to be low because of the respiratory alkalosis. So I'm going to exclude any answer choice that shows a normal or high CO2 level. So I'm going to exclude C, D, and E because these show normal or high CO2 levels. And we expect the CO2 to be low because of the respiratory alkalosis. At the same time, we expect bicarbonate levels to be low as well because of metabolic acidosis. This buffer is being consumed by the accumulated organic acids and anions because of high anion gap. And so I'm also going to exclude any answer choice that shows a normal or high bicarbonate level. So obviously I'm going to exclude answer choice B. So the correct answer is A without looking at the pH. If you just understand the acid-base disturbance that salicylates cause, 
early on, respiratory alkalosis, so CO2 is low, exclude anything other, otherwise, and later, metabolic acidosis, so bicarbonate is low, exclude any answer choice otherwise. Okay, so as you can see, the pH here is normal, guys. They cancel out each other, but there is a disaster going on, so you should not depend on the pH in answering questions about aspirin. Now, this... Um, like it's not required, but this is a way to make sure that you actually answered correctly or just for clinical purposes, guys, there's something called the Winters formula. Whenever you have a metabolic acidosis and you want to see whether this low value of carbon dioxide is a compensation or is there a mixed respiratory alkalosis that is hidden so how do you figure out whether this value of carbon dioxide is actually a compensation for the metabolic acidosis or that there is respiratory alkalosis? Now, there is something called predicted PaCO2. So and this, this is what we calculate with the Winters formula. So we expect that for such a level of bicarbonate, which is 12, for such a level of bicarbonate, the level of carbon dioxide should be 26, right? So that's 1.5 times 12 plus 8. So this is the level of CO2 that should compensate for um, this level of bicarbonate, right? Plus or minus 2 means that it's a range of 24 to 28. So this is the expected compensation. It shouldn't go below that. But what we find here is that it's 20. It's much, much lower. And that means there is a mixed acid-base disturbance. There is respiratory alkalosis accompanying it. Okay, so this is another way to figure out that indeed there is an underlying mixed acid-base disturbance. But that's not key to solve this question, guys. It was just a caveat that I wanted to touch on. All right, moving on to the next question. All right, guys. So this question is a mix of acid base and electrolytes, and it's just so, um, I don't know, it requires you to master concepts really well. So like I always uh, use this method with you guys to read the last two sentences first. I just didn't use them with the previous questions because we didn't need to. But I'm going to use them here. On examination, his breath has a mildly fruity odor. So right away, without even reading the question, I figured out that this is a case of DKA. So let's read from the beginning. A 23-year-old man with a history of type 1 diabetes. Very consistent with the picture we're seeing here. He's brought to the ER due to confusion weakness. His symptoms began two days ago. After he started having mild diarrhea. What's the point here? The point here, guys, is to show you that after infection, when his insulin, um, when his um, glucose requirements are increased because of infection, obviously he would require um, to decrease his insulin um dosing right because the cells here need more glucose right or i mean uh, increase his insulin so because of increased glucose requirements as a result of infection but he still missed several doses instead of actually increasing he missed doses and so as you can see the cells are now deprived of oxygen so they're gonna try to try to found another way to uh produce energy which is to make ketone bodies and those ketone bodies lead to ketoacidosis as i mentioned in my dka video and so you expect this patient to be in metabolic acidosis right um dka is uh causes anion gap metabolic acidosis because of the fruity odor and type 1 diabetes suggests that very well which means that we are not going to accept any answer choice that shows a high pH. We're only gonna accept answer choices that show acidosis. And so this is the time that I tell you guys, look at the pH first. And that's what you should do normally, guys. You should look at the pH. But for aspirin, I told you, because it's an acid-based disturbance, I don't look at it first. So 
I'm going to exclude answer choice A, obviously, because the pH should be low. As you all know, now as acid accumulates, which are the ketone bodies, the keto acids, as they accumulate, they increase the hydrogen ion concentration in the blood. And so the primary buffer system will try to buffer this effect and return the pH back to normal. And this primary buffer system is the bicarbonate, which will try to take as much hydrogen ions as it can and return the pH back to normal. So as you can see, the bicarbonate is actually sacrificing. It's being used up whenever there is a case of acidosis. Bicarbonate is always used up. And so I will exclude any answer choice that shows otherwise. We expect the bicarbonate to be low as it's being used up trying to buffer all this acid. And so obviously answer choice E is incorrect. Okay, so first we filtered down by the pH and next we filtered out by the bicarb. All right, so we are left with answer choices that show metabolic acidosis, right? Low bicarb, low pH. Now, what about this? Actually, this is one of the few questions that shows that, which is the urine buffer system, because the question really asks, this patient is most likely to demonstrate which of the following urine chemistry patterns. Now, obviously, if the blood has a low pH, the urine will also have a low pH as it tries to excrete all this hydrogen, right? If the blood has low bicarb, the urine will also have low bicarb. Urine, guys, it's filtered blood after all, right? Now, what about this? Okay, so the kidneys, guys, will try in any case of acidosis, will try to excrete as much hydrogen ions as they can and reabsorb as much bicarbonate as they can to try to return the um, acid-base disturbance back to normal. Now, remember, guys, that the more the acidosis in the blood, the more the acidity of the urine. And the high acidity of the urine is unacceptable because it will prevent any further hydrogen ion excretion. It will be toxic to the cells. So there's also a urine buffer system, just like there is a blood buffer system. The blood buffer system is the bicarbonate and the urine buffer system will be ammonia and phosphate. So the filtered phosphate will combine with um, the hydrogen ions in the urine to form this acid, phosphoric acid. So I want you guys to remember bicarb buffers blood, phosphate buffers urine, all right? And phosphate and ammonia. Ammonia is even more important. All right, so because bicarb buffers blood, it will be consumed. And because phosphate buffers urine to make this acid, this acid will be high. And so we're going to choose answer choice D. This one shows that the bicarbonate is low, the pH is low, and the phosphate is high. I'm sorry, guys. Answer choice B is very similar. It's the same. <laughs> okay, so I mixed up the arrows. Anyway, B or D, that is metabolic acidosis and increased excretion of phosphoric acid as it tries to buffer out the hydrogen ions in urine and the bicarbonate tries to buffer out the hydrogen ions in blood. All right, so first out, you narrow it down by pH, then you narrow it down by bicarbonate level, and then if the examiner is kind enough, you will find that you're narrowed down between two or even one answer choice, and you're going to reach the correct answer. But if the question is hard, then you will have to figure out that the more the acidity of the urine, the more the kidney will have to buffer it out by making more and more phosphoric acid, right? So again, this is how the kidney uh, acts, guys, in cases of metabolic acidosis. It will try to buffer the blood by increasing bicarbonate reabsorption and hydrogen ion excretion. But because there's a lot of hydrogen ion excretion that's going to make the urine acidic, it will try to buffer the urine by increasing acid buffer excretion. This acid buffer is essentially the uh, phosphate plus hydrogen ions to make this phosphoric acid we've seen in the question. 
ammonia also shares in that to make ammonium ions. I hope this makes sense, guys, and let me know what you think in the comments.